In a taped 60 Minutes interview seeming to blame top members of his national security team, the president said uh, they failed to realize just how much of a threat ISIS was in the early going. He also had this to say when he asked if we are at war with ISIS. Listen. What I'm saying is that we are assisting Iraq in a very real battle that's taking place on their soil with their troops, but we are providing air support. And it is in our interest to do that because ISIL represents uh, sort of a hybrid of not just a terrorist network, but one with territorial ambitions and some of the strategy and tactics of an army. This is not America against ISIL. This is America leading the international community to assist a country with whom we have a security partnership with to make sure that they uh, are able to take care of their business. Joining me now for reaction, Arizona Senator John McCain. Senator, thanks for coming this in is, today. <laughs> this is not a war against ISIL, but for ISIL, it's a war against us. Help me out. I mean, th mm -hmm. this whole speech, Shannon, was a the dog ate my homework speech. He's blaming now the intelligence community. And by the way, there's already enormous blowback mm -hmm. from the intelligence community saying, of course, you know, the president gets a daily intelligence mm -hmm. uh, piece of paper. And if a lot of presidents would have a person come over and personally brief them every day. But uh, maybe he doesn't read those because it was clear to all of us including myself and Senator Lindsey Graham, we warned about this. We said it's happening. And the intelligence community clearly knew that it was happening. And for him to say that we're not in a war against ISIL, when Baghdadi, the head of ISIL, when he left our Camp Bukha in Iraq, after he'd spent four years there, his last words were, see you in New York. Go on the web page, go on their web page, go on the internet. They are determined to attack the United States of America. And don't take my word for it. Ask the head of the CIA, the director of national intelligence, the secretary of Homeland Security. They'll all tell you that this is a direct threat to the United States of America, which means to me, I'm not sure how serious the president. In fact, I'm, I, I don't think he's really serious about the nature of this threat. Do you think it's that he doesn't understand or hasn't fully understood it to this point? Or do you think it's that you know, he ran on getting our men and women home from those places, and that was just the strategy he was going to stick to at all costs. I'm afraid that that's the, that's the case. Every president in history, the good ones and the not so good ones, have made a mistake, acknowledged it, and then moved on. President Reagan, Iran Contra, acknowledged and then moved on. President Clinton with uh, in Bosnia, President uh, George W. Bush after the debacle in Iraq and when he started the surge, acknowledged the mistake. This it's, it doesn't seem to be in this president's DNA to acknowledge that they were wrong. And, and then I think the American people would be willing to move forward. I noticed that his numbers haven't budged. Why is that? Because I don't think the, pres the American people have any confidence in this guy anymore. Yeah, the polls do show significant um, you know, skepticism when it comes to his ability to handle foreign policy issues. Now, something you've said is that if we had armed the Free Syrian oh, Army yeah. years ago, we wouldn't be where we are today. Obviously, there's a lot of debate about who we arm, what we give them, how do we vet them. Uh, where do you think we go now? Two things. One, if we lift a residual force and they keep saying that they wanted to, it's a lie. Uh, and I don't say that very often because Lindsey Graham and I were in Baghdad when they were ready to deal. And all you've ever seen from the President of the United States until recently was got the last combat troop out of Iraq. That was his commitment. But the second thing is that uh, uh, we could, it was a recommendation of the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, and the, and the director of the CIA to arm the Free Syrian Army. At that time, it was two years ago, the Free Syrian Army, which much more capable, thousands of them had been killed, Shannon, and they were much more capable, and we could have, the, the situation in, in Syria would be very different today, and ISIS, in my view, never would have uh, ever come into the position they're in today, which is the strongest, richest caliphate in history. Mm -hmm. And why in the world we keep talking about Syria on the one hand and Iraq on the other hand as if they're two different conflicts? They're not. Look at the map. It's one caliphate of the ISIS. And so for us to have one strategy on one side and one, another on the other is bad. One other point, 
we're arming now the Free Syrian Army, 5,000 of them, even though ISIS has 31,000, which is, brings into question the real purpose here. But we're going to tell these young men that we are training to go back into Syria and be bombed and killed and murdered by Bashar Assad? who has done most of the killing, 192,000 dead, and we're going to say, okay, go kill ISIS, but don't do anything with Bashar Assad while he's raining bombs down on you? We need a no-fly no zone. If we're really going to succeed, we need a no-fly zone there. Yeah, and the president acknowledged the difficult uh, contradictions there now that we're facing in Syria, uh, Syria and especially those fighters there on the ground. He can um, acknowledge it by saying there's a no-fly zone, and if you fly, we're going to take you out, Bashar. All right. Senator, very good to see you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Shannon. A lot going on. There is. There, uh, not a shortage of news in the world. Senator, thanks. Eric.